the neck. That's a really tough one. Yeah. It's like rock. You know, it, with the neck, let's start with that horrible shoulder, shoulder opener. We're rolling, right, babe? Thank you. Um, this one. <laughs> so let's start with it. And remember, you asked for it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, good morning, good morning. <laughs> You're going to lie on your belly. And then stretch your right arm out to the right. You're going to go with the right arm. Is that the right arm? <laughs> and then take your, take your face away from your hand and hug your knees up to your chest. And stretch. You're welcome. Exactly. You got it, Robin. Stretch your top arm up. Twist your arm around and palms facing each other. Try to hold hands behind your back without significantly lowering your hand. And isn't that wonderful to see? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's, this is such a great picture of how we humans are. <laughs> there you go. That sometimes we'll be just so close and we have no idea how close we are until we have the help of other humans. <laughs> See, humans are cool. Take a full inhale. And with your exhale, just sigh out. <sighs> you can put your left foot onto the ground. Is that enough? Maybe your right foot too. If your head's not touching the ground, put something underneath your head. Then take these first couple of moments to feel into your body. Notice the sensations where they're most intense, but then also maybe where there's sensation missing. Before I started doing yoga a long time ago, I had lots of like chronic back pain. And I remember once going into my chiropractor who was amazing and totally like rescued me from chronic pain or well sort of <laughs> alleviated me we should say from chronic pain and um, and one day I went in and he like touched my big toe and I couldn't feel it my whole my whole this whole line in my body was numb and I hadn't even noticed So taking the time just to notice gives you more of a sense of home in your body. So make sure you notice also the positive things. And then roll onto your belly. Moan and groan, inwardly being thankful we're not staying there for the full five minutes. Three minutes will do you just fine. And let's take it to the other side. Stretch your left arm out, straight out from your shoulder. Turn your face away from your left arm. Hug your knees up to your chest so your knees are higher than your hips. Stretch up with your right hand Spin your hand, reach down, see if you can hold hands. Maybe bring both one or two feet to the ground. <laughs> and take a couple moments to notice how your energy body is this morning. No 
notice the way you're animated. Notice that when your attention travels to an area, it actually increases the energy. For instance, if you just concentrate even on your hands, you'll notice they start warming up. It's a beautiful little slice of noticing how much our attention gives life to something. attention is the most precious thing that you can give. Use it wisely. Roll onto your belly, moan and groan a little bit. Notice how noise and sounds Mostly sounds coming out of your mouth will help process feelings. Wiggle your fingers, make sure they all still work. Mm-hmm. And I like it spontaneously, two out of the three of you already started to come up into Sphinx pose. So let's make our way into Sphinx. Find your elbows slightly in front of your shoulders. You can allow your shoulders to fall up. or you can pull them down your back. Take your legs wide as the mat. If that's too much pressure, bring your legs back together. If it, in the five minutes, gets too intense, just for a moment you can engage your thigh muscles and then let them go, and it kind of eases the sensation in your lower back. I kind of want her to make me all of this, the <laughs> planetary signs now. <laughs> really? I think it'd be kind of funny to wear Mars. But it's beautifully done. But before we start talking about jewelry, Check in and see how you're feeling this morning, how your heart is. What is it full with? It's not feeling full, maybe just also add a, just a moment to notice what you're grateful for.
take a couple of moments to notice how your thinking has been. last minute of the pose, if you want to extend your arms and come into seal, like Anna, you can do that. And you also cannot do that. Take a couple moments to focus on or remember or imagine um, into what your highest intention is in this life. I know, epic, big. It's a little bit like you've been given you've been given superpowers, but sometimes we kind of forget to use them. So this act of remembering our intention, our highest intention, you know, it can be something so big that you alone could never ever accomplish it. But this can bring us back to center where we can find access to more energy and more manifesting power. And then slowly lower down to the ground, maybe stack your forearms or take your gaze to one side or the other. I can't remember if I locked the door. So I'm just going to double check. Again, we get to check in a little bit with the waters of our body. And now it's time to really flame and stoke our fires. Yeah. <laughs> so bring your hands underneath your shoulders and tuck your toes under and lift up into plank. Good morning <laughs> to downward facing dog. <laughs> and wiggle around a bunch. Move your weight from your foot to your foot. Hand to hand, back and forth. Right magically in between all four points that meet the ground. Lift up your right leg, stretch your leg out, work it out. Maybe kick yourself in the butt a couple times. Yeah, snap, crackle, pop. Oh yeah, and then relax your right leg down. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Work it out, move it around. Snap, crackle, pop. And relax your left leg down. Inhale, stretch up your right hand. What? Yes, I said it. Oh yeah, just work it out, wiggle it out. Yeah, now switch hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then walk your feet in between your hands. Separate your feet so they're hip distance apart and bend your knees deeply. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers and reach your knuckles down to the ground. Separate your feet so they're the hip distance. 
or wider. Notice if you're making a face, maybe smile, radical self-expression here. And then release your hands down to the ground, staying in a forward bend for a moment. Feel into your feet. Our feet are pada bandha. The, um, the, the lock of our feet, you want to feel the ball of your big toe, the ball of your little toe, the inside of your heel, the outside of your heel. Then imagine you have X's on the bottoms of your feet that throughout your practice, you're going to spread out. Feel these X's on the ground, and from there, push down and roll slowly up, even helping yourself up with your hands. Reach your hands up to the sky. Stretch out your fingertips. Maybe lift up the corners of your mouth. Spin your palms to face one another. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Let your elbows drop. Step your feet together. And let's sound three ohms, even if they sound weird. Empty your breath. Take a deep inhale. Stretch your arms up high, reach up tall. Exhale, bow forward. Let your head drop, your belly lift up, your pants down. <laughs> Inhale, halfway lift. Oh, did I say that out loud? And then step back to plank. Now drop your chest, chin, and knees for Ashtanga Namaskar. And then inhale, low cobra, toenails on the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now you might have to drop your um, knees to do this, but see if you can bring your elbows down to the ground. And then inhale forward, coming into an, like an elbow plank. It's very much like chaturanga, isn't it? And then exhale, downward facing dog. I'm sorry, elbows on the ground, dolphin pose. This is one of the ways in downward facing dog, especially to um, if your wrists are hurting too much to protect your wrists. You can always do this. Another thing is um, you can do the whole vinyasa on your fists. Take another full inhale, stretch your arms out, empty your breath all the way, look forward and walk or hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Push down with your feet. Rise up tall. Lifting all of your cells up to the sky. And then exhale, Samasthi Tihi. Inhale, rise up. Stretch your arms. Exhale, bow forward. Let your head drop. Inhale, halfway lift. And this time, put your fists on the ground and come into plank. You can I, can, I like to stick out my thumbs because it helps with the balance. Now inch forward to your tippy toes, either Ashtanga Namaskar or Chataranga with your fists on the ground. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Fisting. Exhale, downward facing dog. So it's just, just to go through that vinyasa and, and show yourself that you can do that if your wrists are hurting. 
when we first start our practice or sometimes along the way, we'll go through a period where the wrists are very achy. And a lot of it has to do with building new muscle. You know, any transformation feels and is awkward. But you want to make sure that you're not overstraining your wrists. So the, the different cues that help you take the weight out of your wrists are one, to make sure that you, if your hamstrings are tight, you're bending your knees a little bit. The next is to really focus on the first knuckle of your thumb and your index finger and pushing that soft spot in between. Take another full inhale. Empty your breath all the way. Walk or float your feet forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Push down with your feet. Rise up tall. Maybe a little of a back bend. And with your exhale, samasthi tihi. Now, to get our heat a little bit higher, drop your butt, bend your knees, inhale, ooh, katasana. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, chaturanga. Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Feel your hips pull up and back as your hands plant down. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, walk or float your feet forward. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, release and bow down. Push down with your feet, bend your knees, <laughs> drop your hips, inhale, ukatasana, oops. And then samasthi tihi with your exhale. Inhale, ukatasana. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift, feel your abdominals and jump back to chaturanga or step and lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog, point your toes, lift your heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky and then place your right foot next to your right thumb. Your left heel is gonna stay lifted, rise up, crescent lunge. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. And with your exhale, step your left foot all the way to your left thumb. Even if you have to help it, rise up. Crescent lunge, back leg strong. Exhale, chaparanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Rise up, anjaniyasana. And let's take a couple breaths here. So weird resting pose. The way to find more freedom in this posture is you really want to have your heel over your toes and then get strong with your leg. If you find that you're going from side to side, you can step your feet wide or apart so it's as if you're on, balancing on like narrow train tracks. If you're very flexible and comfortable with it, you're going to have to work on the strength of this posture, not just sinking into where you're flexible. If you're very strong, you want to work on the flexibility. Stretch your arms out so your elbows are liberated. Take another full inhale, open arm twist to your right. Inhale here, then exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or la cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, step your left foot all the way forward to your left thumb. Sometimes you need to help it. Rise up, crescent lunge. Now find the power in the pose by like lifting up the earth energy. So get strong with your legs. Now that you have the power in your legs, find the lightness in your upper body. Find space between your ribs and your hips. And imagine you have two little fairies lifting up the corners of your mouth. <laughs> or whatever works for you. 
Take another full inhale. And with your exhale, open arm twist to your left. Reach through your fingertips. Inhale here, strong back leg, even in the twist. And exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And walk your hands back to your feet. And just hook onto your big toes with your peace fingers and your thumbs. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, release and bow down. You want to feel that you're pulling with your arms a little bit so your elbows are moving to the sides. Your belly button's lifting up to your spine. You're flirting with falling forward. And walk your hands forward to downward facing dog. Pull your hips up and back. Look forward, empty your breath all the way and jump your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Inhale, ukatasana. Exhale, open arm twist to your right. Inhale, step your feet together, come to center, ukatasana. With your exhale, step your feet together and twist to your left. Inhale, ukatasana, exhale, bow forward. Ooh, yeah. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, vinyasa. So, chaptaranga or ashtanga namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra, active legs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, touch your right knee to your left elbow. Lift up your abdominals, arch your back. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Rise up, crescent lunge. Exhale, open arm twist to the <laughs> Inhale here, and then exhale, warrior two, facing the opposite direction. Inhale, reverse your warrior, and exhale, fly, chaptaranga. Inhale, <laughs> I love it. Up dog, exhale, down dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, take it across your body, touch your right elbow, lift up your belly. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb. Rise up, crescent lunge. And open arm twist to your left. Reach through your fingertips, get powerful with your back leg. And with your next exhale, warrior two, facing the opposite direction. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, vinyasa. Are you getting a little warmer now? Inhale, upward facing dog. Feel even like your belly button stretching. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then walk your hands back to your feet. And this time, slide your hands underneath for gorilla pose. So this is, so yeah, it is gorilla pose, really. You can um, bend your knees more if your toes aren't touching your wrists. Inhale, halfway lift, lifting up your head, maybe bending your knees a little bit more. And with your exhale, bow forward and work on straightening your legs. Feel your belly lift up to your spine. Being very active here. This is a way not to rest all the time in downward facing dogs. So this also, this posture is a wrist releasing pose. Try to breathe through your nose. Unjai breath. It should sound weird and kind of Darth Vader-ish-y. Maybe notice if you can lift up your perineum for your mula bandha here. Pull in your hara point for the Uddiyana bandha. And then step off your hands, walk your hands back forward to downward facing dog. With your inhale, imagine your hips being pulled up and back. Empty your breath all the way. As you look forward, hop your feet in between your hands. Lift up halfway. 
Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees, drop your hips, inhale, ooh, katasana. With your exhale, open arm twist to your right. Inhale up to center, check it out. Take your arms back behind you and bow forward. Inhale, ooh, katasana, let your arms swing up, it's kind of fun. Exhale, open arm twist to your left. Inhale, ooh, katasana. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, take your right knee to touch your right elbow and enjoy a push up. Inhale, extend your right leg. With your exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Rise up, crescent lunge. Open arm twist to your right. Inhale here, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, side angle vari variation. Place your elbow on your knee. Now drop your arm in front of you and lift it in front of your face. And you find this kind of sweet spot for it. At least that's how I feel about it. Roll the tips of your ears for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let your shoulders come back. Now maybe just float your bottom elbow just to make sure you're tough. <laughs> your, your abdominals are actually keeping you there. Yeah. And now you're going to take your top arm and you're going to corkscrew it behind you and hold on to your thigh. Feel how that opens up your chest. Your gaze lifts to the ceiling. Now if you want, you can drop your right arm down and wrap it below your thigh and hold hands behind you, coming into the bind. Very, very close, beautiful. Now with that bind, you should feel that you can lean back against it. Yeah, gorgeous. Lunge deeper, Anna. See if you can relax your forehead. Yeah. And then stay low, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, take your left knee to your left elbow, enjoy a push up. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb, rise up, crescent lunge. Open arm twist to your left. Inhale here. Get strong, and with your exhale, warrior two, thank you. Inhale, reverse your warrior. No reversal? And with your exhale, <laughs> side angle variation. And again, you can do this thing where you drop your hand and bring it in front of your face, and it's nearly like you can really find this sweet spot there where it's a straight line from your middle finger to the outside of your right foot. I find I can find it better if I swing my arm this way. Yes, but it's, it's me, you know. See if you can drop your right hip. Yes. Let your shoulders come away from your ears. Find the length in the back of your neck. And then take your top arm and corkscrew it behind you. Didn't know corkscrew is a verb, right? Feel your chest being spun open. And then if you want, reach down with your left arm, reach back behind you and see if you can hold hands. Once you get the grip, you can, this bind, you can like lean back against it, opening up your shoulders. And one side might not be like the other side. We're not in the wrist, son, I don't see the problem. Get strong with your right leg, yes! And then stay low, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And walk your hands back to your feet. And this time we're gonna do a forward bend where you take your hands back behind you on the outside of your legs. Just wiggle your fingers to make sure you're in the right spot just because it's kind of fun. And then reach your right hand in between your legs and bring your right hand to the front of your left ankle and vice versa. Actually, you can't bring your ankle. Anyways, blah, blah. 
and inhale, halfway lift, exhale, release and bow forward. So again, this sensation here is that you're holding yourself up. And with the grip, you can actually lean against the grip. So it's, it's this lesson of like leaning into the resistance. If your toes are turning a fright, frighteningly paler shade of you, just lift them up and then relax them back down. See if you can drop your head. And then undo your grip. Walk your hands back to downward facing dog. Take a full inhale, pull your hips up and back. Empty your breath all the way, look forward. And then this time, float your legs in between your hands and come onto your butt. Okay, go back and let's try it again. Here, I wanna show you something. Um, I actually was serious. But um, <laughs> um, if you're not jumping all the way through, I want you to come to this spot and find a little float. Or not. Oh, or just jump your legs through. That's fine too. Okay. <laughs> nice. You're like, that doesn't look cool. I'll do I'll do the other one. <laughs> so so the way um, Kino teaches it is she talks about how you kind of break it down. And so the first part is walking up to your hands and, and as you have the flexibility, then you come through and just stretch your legs out and have that moment of lift when you're stretching the legs out and forward. And that will start to build it. Yeah? So it's not such a speedy sensation. It might even be an awkward sensation. Bring your feet so they're just lined up with your hands or slightly in front. Sl yeah, and then lower your butt. And then push down with your hands as soon as you can. And sh yeah, so you had that moment of air. And then put your feet on the ground and do a little funky dance. <laughs> yes. And then slide your heels in so that your heels are as close to your buttocks as possible and your feet are about hip distance apart. And then slide your heels a little wider. Inhale, lift up your hips. And you can kind of wiggle your shoulders underneath and hold hands below. Very nice, very nice. So the power here is that you feel you create resistance to move against by pushing your feet down, letting your knees move away from your face and your chest move towards your face. So it's more oppositions here than just one resistance. But even your hands pushing down into the ground helps the rest of you lift up. Release your hands and lower down one vertebrae at a time. Take a full inhale. Exhale, sigh it out. Oh. And inhale. Lift up your hips, and if you're feeling it, if you feel warm enough, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, bring your hands up next to your ears, fingers pointing down to your heels. First, come up to the crown of your head, squeeze your elbows together, pull your shoulders to your butt, and inhale, slowly move up. Nice, beautiful. Beautiful. Find the resistance, and instead of shying away from it, kind of lean into it. And then slowly bring your chin to your chest, lower back down. Take a full inhale, and with your exhale, sigh out some good stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then bring your hands up next to your ears. Unamas. One more time, and then up you go. Now, if you, if you need a little extra, st step your feet closer together and alternate. Stretch one leg up into the sky, and then the other. 
maybe even just thinking about it was was a wonderful work today. Nice, Anna. <laughs> I was kind of thinking straight up to the sky, but that works out nicely too. Find your edge. Enjoy that place of not being sure if it's too much or too little. And then find your way down, down, down. And then wrap your thumbs and just do little wrist rolls like you're like you have a little pom poms perhaps and then roll your wrists around the other way shake out your fingers Woo. it's like the, the sign language applause yes and bring the bottoms of your feet together in supta baddha konasana And bring your thumbs and your index fingers to touch in triple diamond mudra. And you're going to slide your thumbs just to the spot where the ground meets your head. This is triple diamond anger releasing pose. Now, if you hear something um, like that, something kind of like um, really kind of airy fairy sounding, um, try it out. Start to notice. If you ever have the chance to do this pose when you are angry, notice if you feel something, if you feel that it's releasing or different when you're angry. Today's Wednesday. It's a day of Mercury. Communication and transportation and machines. And this anger releasing pose might be helpful because on the first of Advent, this Sunday, Mercury goes retrograde. And so this week leading up to it, and the first week of Advent, is already tough for a lot of us in a lot of different ways. You know, here in Sweden, we, we have also the, we're coming into the very, the darkest part of the year. I mean, everywhere, but in the Northern Hemisphere. But all these things together can make for a very um, volatile relationships, especially. So when we know that this is going on, we can use that to free us up a little bit from it. So remembering that you can be more patient. You can give someone the benefit of the doubt. But it's by keeping your attention, this most valuable thing that you have, on what it is you're here for, how you want to be. People often talk about all the things that are bad <laughs> during Mercury retrograde, but I also want to remind you that there's a lot of things that it's useful for. It's a really good time for introspection. It's a really good time not to make commitments as, mu as much as plan for the future, like making arrangements for the future. It's also really a great time to finish projects that you've started that you haven't finished. Hug your knees into your chest. Maybe lift your beautiful face and kiss your knees. Thank you. <laughs> and then stretch your left leg long on the ground. And bring your right knee to the left, coming into a twist. Take your gaze away from your knee. So you twist your whole spine. To help release your shoulder or to ground your right shoulder down, you can, you can take your hand and turn your palm over so it's facing the floor. And with your hand just a little bit lower than your shoulder, you'll feel it naturally pull your shoulder blade down. Take a big, full inhale and feel your exhale side out through your mouth, perhaps. 
So often we talk about human nature, we talk about all the negative sides of it. But there's also some really amazing positive sides, like human nature is to care for one another, is to have feeling like empathy. And one of the most highest, unique qualities of human nature is that we can love on purpose. We don't run out. And we don't have to just be reactionary and just love the things that are easy for us to love. Instead, try to love the things that are annoying and challenging too. Come back to center, hug your knees in, switch your legs. Stretch your mm hmm. Maybe hooking your toes behind your bottom knee if that feels more relaxed. Maybe spin your left palm to the ground. It's human nature to feel. So you feel both the, the harshness of the world, but also the beauty. You know, when we take this moment, it's another thing of human nature. We can be reverential. We can be humble and in awe of the beauty around us. And when something isn't beautiful or goes against that nature, instead of um, lashing out or blaming, try asking questions. Because another uniquely human element is that our inner life is not actually always obvious on the outside to other people. And therefore, other people's inner life is not obvious to us. Come back to center. Stretch out your legs. Get a blanket if you want, coming into Shavasana. We have some beautiful lavender eye pillows in the vault. The vault. Fix your blanket, sir.
next inhale, invite your breath to the edges of your body. Feel your awareness traveling on your breath. And maybe wiggle a little bit. And make your way onto your right hand side, hugging your knees to your chest. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Allow your hands to meet at heart center. Feel the solidness of the ground below you. Lift up lightly away from it. Let's close with one ohm. Empty your breath. Take a deep inhale. hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together we say, Namaste. And a little bit of noise. <laughs> Be amazing.